Hi, what I want to show you today is uh, talk about an attenuator for a tube amplifier. I have a product I build called a tube cube and I want to show you how that works. I have a Fender Blues Deluxe. And I have an iPod hooked up to it, to the input, and I'm going to feed a signal, a 400 hertz signal, into the amplifier and show you what the output looks like. So the way this works is attenuator, there's an early prototype I have here, uh, fits between the amplifier output and, and the speaker itself. It does not go in the loop or anywhere, it goes in the high voltage signal path. And then it feeds the power out to the speaker based on second volume So what that really looks like, a tube amplifier is very, very loud. This is a 40 watt amplifier. Let's take a look here. Obviously very loud. You can dial the sound pressure down, like so, way down. So let's hit the uh, let's hit the t the tone, and you're going to see what happens as I run the volume of the amplifier up. You see the waveform. Let's go to a. Uh, you see the waveform start to square off, top and bottom. I bring it down, uh, it goes back to a sine wave. I go to auto range here. So this amplifier is capable of putting out about 40 volts peak to peak. I'm absorbing about 80% of it as I run the volume up. You can see the waveform start to shave top and bottom. It starts to square off. And that is the, uh, that's what generates the harmonics, the great sounding tube crunch that you hear in the tube amplifier. I have a smaller uh, Epiphone 5 watt amplifier, I want to show you that too. And the waveform actually breaks down in a different fashion. Let's fire this bugger up. What I'm going to do is move my, move my signal source, I'm just using an iPod here, over to the Epiphone, Epi Junior actually, and I'm going to take the output from the, let's turn the uh, fender off, I'm going to take the output from the Epi and feed that into my attenuator here. We're going to go back to our 400 hertz tone, and as I run the volume up and down on here, what you can see here is this waveform breaks down in a strange fashion. It doesn't square off on top and bottom, it squares off on the top only. As you can see the bottom is still rounded. It's not perfectly sine wave, but it's still rounded. The top is totally flat. And you can hear the distortion. Obviously it's just a sine wave, you're just hearing a little bit of distortion. With a musical signal from a guitar amplifier, a sweet ES-335 or a Strat, you're going to get some great harmonics out of the tubes, but each amplifier has a different fashion and has a different sound quality when it's attenuated heavily, like this one is right now. So, I just wanted to give a pictorial of what, uh, what's going on there. Uh, when you put an attenuator in your tube amplifier's output, again, Tube Cube is the product I sell. There's plenty of nice ones on the market. They're pretty expensive, probably range between 200 and up to a couple thousand bucks and um, they're all similar in how they operate they absorb power from the amplifier and allow you to control the volume that the speaker puts out so you can find the sweet spot on the amplifiers uh, tonality while you are um, uh, controlling the volume uh, somewhat even a 40 watt tube amplifier is extremely loud uh, it's unlikely in a in a small to medium sized club you can even crank the thing out and get the right tone uh, without getting complaints. 
So that's where an attenuator is used. Um, the other option is to use like a distortion pedal on the input and that creates a signal that gets passed. Um, but there's nothing quite like the distortion, a great crunchy distortion of a tube amplifier running uh, some hot tubes and being able to control your volume level. So if you decide to check out an attenuator, uh, either mine or some other one, uh, check it out. They're a lot of fun to, to play with. You get some great, great tone. No doubt about it. Hey, thanks for listening. Take care.